Welcome back, and I've got an absolutely fascinating experiment for you today. What we're going to look at is the behaviour of electrons in electric and magnetic fields, and it's called the electron mirror. So to do this experiment, we need a fine beam of electrons uh, that shine onto a fluorescent screen so we can see how they're traveling. And once we've got our electron gun working and our stream of electrons, we then need to put a magnetic field at 90 degrees to the direction those electrons are moving. And if we get the settings right, we'll see something called the electron mirror. So if you've seen my earlier videos, I hope you're all familiar with the electron gun. So if you remember, uh, my physics teacher always taught me uh, set everything up in front of your students. So I'm going to connect into the uh, heater of the electron gun in here. So that's 6.3 volts um, at a couple of amps to create a hot filament. That's going to heat uh, a cathode and that cathode will have electrons that come off it. And to force them off it, we're going to make the cathode very negative, about minus 5,000 volts. And to encourage them to travel across the tube, uh, we're going to have an anode here that's very positive. So I'll just connect into that. And we'll connect that to the positive of the power supply. And so now we're ready to turn on and see our fine beam of electrons travelling across the tube. So typically I've chosen the brightest day of the year to try and do this experiment, but never mind, let's turn on. There we go. Now that's not the electron beam, that's just light from the filament. Um, so we know the filament's hot, and then if we turn up the accelerating voltage, that blue line you can see, uh, that is the electron beam. So what we need to do now is put an electric field uh, across this tube from top to bottom um, to deflect the electron beam electrostatically. Right, so to deflect the beam electrostatically, let's set up an electric field in here. And remembering that electrons are negative, I'm going to make the top plate positive. So I'll connect that to the positive of the power supply, or I could just connect it to the anode. And I'm going to make the bottom plate negative. So the electric field is going downwards in the tube, but the electrons, because they're negative, um, we're making an assumption there, of course, but we know that electrons are, are negative and going to be deflected upwards. So let's turn it on and see what we get. OK, so let's turn on. So there's the heater coming on and you can see the light from the filament. Uh, but now we'll turn on the power supply. And there you go. You can see the electrons deflected upwards towards the positive plate. Um, there's a slight spread in the beam, and that's because not all the electrons have quite the same velocity. Um, just to prove that it's the electric field that's deflecting the electrons, I'll just disconnect the power supply from the top and from the bottom. And there we are, back to the horizontal electron beam. So now what we're going to do is leave the tube as it is with its electric field deflecting the electrons, but we're going to add to it a magnetic field at 90 degrees. And if you remember something about magnetic fields, a magnetic field at 90 degrees to the velocity of electrons uh, will bend them in the third direction. So we've got electrons traveling across the tube this way. We're going to have a magnetic field through the tube. I'm not sure in which direction yet. And therefore, it's going to bend the electrons up or down. So to get the magnetic field through the tube, we're going to use some Helmholtz coils. Um, we could, I suppose, use two magnets uh, on either side of the tube, uh, but the Helmholtz coils are both uh, see-through, but more importantly, they should give a fairly uniform field. So we'll slot that in there and connect the anode back up. It's quite a loose connection, that one. Um, and we'll put the other Helmholtz coil on this side. And I have to be sure that I can actually see the connections. I've got them the wrong way around. Okay, 
and then we're going to wire up the Helmholtz coils to a low voltage power supply and pass current through both of them, making sure the current's going the same way in the, both the coils, and that will create a fairly uniform field through the tube in the axis uh, between the camera and myself. Okay, so it's beginning to look complicated now, so let's get the magnetic field going. So I've got a low voltage power supply, so I'm going to come out of the positive, this is DC, into this Helmholtz coil. The current will go round and round it, out of it, into the next Helmholtz coil, making sure it goes round in the same direction, and back to the power supply. So now we've got the ability to deflect the electrons with an electric field, that's the two plates, top and bottom, and a magnetic field that's going through the centre of the tube. OK, so back in the darkened room, and that's the electric field bending the electrons upwards towards the positive plate and away from the negative one. So I'm just going to disconnect the two plates and we're back to the horizontal beam. And now what I'm going to do is turn up the magnetic field and I've made sure I've got the current going the right way round in the Helmholtz coils to make sure that the beam is deflected downwards. So there we go. So what the plan is to do next is to get it balanced so that the force upwards due to the electric field will be completely counterbalanced by the force downwards due to the magnetic field and the beam will go straight. And once we've got to that situation, the balance situation, then we'll turn up the magnetic field and make it much stronger and we'll see the effect that we're hoping to see, which is the electron mirror. So our horizontal electron beam, I'm going to connect up the top plate to the very positive and the bottom plate to the very negative. Easier said than done in the dark. There we go. OK. And now we know that that deflection is caused only by electric fields, but we're going to turn up the magnetic field, which forces the electrons in the opposite direction and get to a fairly balanced situation, fairly horizontal line. But what I'm going to do now is turn up the magnetic field so it's much stronger than the electric field. And let's see what happens. So here we go, we've got the balance situation where the force due to the electric field upwards is equal to the force due to the magnetic field downwards. Let's turn up the magnetic field even more. And I'm not sure if you can see that very well on the camera. I'll certainly zoom in. But that effect is the electron mirror. You can see the electrons travelling downwards and then appearing to bounce upwards and go back up towards the top deflection plate. Obviously you don't see that happen because the tube is not long enough, but you see this sort of wavy shape. Okay, so let's try and explain what's happening here. And it's not an easy explanation, but I'll try my best. So the electrons are traveling through a magnetic and electric field. And here the electric field is weaker than the magnetic field. So the electrons are being pushed downwards by the magnetic field towards the negative plate. But as they travel closer to the negative plate, they're going to slow down and slow down because obviously they don't want to go towards the negative plate. They're being forced upwards by the electric field. Once they reach a zero velocity, they can't feel any effect of the magnetic field because magnetic fields only put forces on moving charges. So at the bottom point of the curve, the electrons have reached a zero velocity going downwards and are now only affected by the electric field. So they accelerate upwards towards the positive plate. However, as they accelerate upwards, they feel the magnetic field getting stronger and stronger and stronger because they're going faster. So that, again, slows them down in the vertical direction and curves them as if they were going to go back towards the negative plate at the bottom. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. Um, it looks terribly complicated, but I hope you could follow what I did and understand what was happening uh, to make the electron mirror. Anyway, 
You should have a much better understanding now of these type of deflection tubes and I find them absolutely fascinating and I hope you do too. So I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.